Uh, ben, are you with yeah. us? Yeah, okay. Uh, so let me introduce uh, Mr. Ben Coombs, who's in New Zealand. Um, New Zealand has the great advantage of being almost COVID free. <laughs> so uh, the people of New Zealand have been uh, not as encumbered by the pandemic, uh, but have nonetheless uh, worked on behalf of the whole world. And you're about to see some examples of this. Let me remind you, uh, this is the fifth project we're going to have. He, Ben's going to talk about two distinct projects. And then uh, Avinash is going to talk about the seventh. And then we're going to take a little break and have everybody um, measure the impact of these in millifullers, which is, I know, a little confusing. It's kind of a new concept, uh, but I'll be here. Um, we'll, we'll be explaining all of that. So take it away, Ben. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rob. So um, I'll be presenting two projects, uh, VentOS and PyOp, which is the oxygen concentrator. Um, so VentOS is, is a helpful engineering project, but working closely with public invention um, with Robert and I um, on the team and um, with Dr. Eric Schultz, who's an ethetist from Australia, who you've probably read his work. He wrote earlier in the year a sort of a, um, a Bible of how to build a ventilator and um, a lot of detail information there from someone who's spent several thousand hours using these um, these machines in um, hospitals. We've also had many other volunteers contribute, Brittany Tran, Ling Wang, uh, Lemian, Nicola, and Uni Nair. So it's it's been a good um, project so far. Um, we are using GitLab uh, instead of GitHub uh, as well. Um, because in partnership, um, VentOS is really part of this modular ecosystem that has been uh, mentioned several times. So we recognize the need for a high quality um, embedded uh, operating system, which is what it was supposed to be, but it's really an open source um, app that is provides quality um, ventilation models and um, displays and things like that. The idea is to be modular uh, and we've been using platform IO, which um, we've created essentially a library of um, uh, different, uh, yeah, different libraries that can be used um, so that we can uh, swap out uh, various components as we need to. We've really been uh, partnering with a team called Polyvent, uh, which is based in Germany and have been working with their hardware so we don't build hardware. We are only focusing on the software component, which can be used with basically any type of ventilator. So it could be used with say a, a bag squeezer or a blower motor or, or valves, um, different types of uh, microcontrollers and also different um, displays as well. So really trying to be flexible as much as possible. We've broken it down into really the core um, control system and then different sensor modules, um, an air drive module, and then we're starting to work on a UI module. So those are the main sort of four components and we can break them up into maybe three or four different teams. Um, as things we've learned over time have been working with sort of a um, online, you know, in different um, time zones and different people across the world has been quite a challenge. So how we can actually work as a team, um, you know, asynchronous, asynchronously, even though um, we have weekly meetups, which have been very successful, I think, to keep everyone in the same um, in the same step. So this is the rough um, architecture that we came up with a little while ago uh, in July, which is more or less what we're designing to at the moment. But it's just a simple loop um at the moment which is one rtos task and then we can have that with other rtos tasks as well which um so this could be restarted if it needs to and you can see here the modularity in play as we have um different interfaces that we've started to define in c plus plus using uh platform io so the idea is that you can inherit from these different um 
different um, classes and then implement your own drivers. So specifically for your, um, your hardware or your valves or your blower motor. Um, so that the core loop sort of still functions, um, even though your hardware might change. So it's, it's building off that resiliency in the supply chain. Uh, we've also focused heavily on documentation, which was a big part of the beginning of the, pro, uh, the, the project, which, um, you know, as Rob mentioned, getting the FDA approval is, is not a small task and that requires you know, a lot of documentation. So we've got quality plans, software plans, um, FMEA, and we're starting to build out a Google Docs sort of framework, some, some little macros basically that will be needed to um, create sort of an open source uh, quality control tool, which anyone could use. So part of the deliverables of this is also to help other teams. Um, we hosted uh, the, the QARA conference, uh, which focused just on helping engineering teams learn more about uh, how they can actually get through the, the regulatory hurdles. And part of that, we're still seeing struggles in, in people, uh, you know, documentation is always gonna be uh, last on people's minds when they're trying to invent things. So if we can build out um, examples and tools that can help people, uh, other teams, that that's always um, very beneficial. So we've made quite a lot of progress so far. Um, a lot of it's focused on, on the people that are developing the projects. Uh, and we've automated a lot of this using Platform IO, which is a great tool uh, for embedded development. If you haven't heard of that, I'd really recommend you look at that. Um, it's slightly more advanced than say Arduino, but it's, um, it automates a lot of things and, and has unit testing built in, uh, which has been a big focus for us. So all the functions uh, ha have been unit tested or should be unit tested. And we've developed sort of patterns around that. Uh, and that's part of the sort of safety philosophy of, of VentOS. Uh, we also have a Docker container that we've made. So we don't have the problem of, you know, works on my machine, but not yours. Uh, and also to get developers up and running really quickly, it's we'll try to minimize the amount of steps that it need you need to take. Uh, and we've got a CI pipeline in GitLab that runs as well, which runs tests. So everything, all the code that's uploaded is automatically tested. Uh, Dr. Schultz has also created this Python data dictionary as a source of truth. So it's, a, uh, it's still a work in progress, but it, it, it means that we don't have um, duplication of information. It contains all the alarms and um, all the sort of essential ventilator uh, information. Um, we've also got a lot of project management tools and um, developer guides that we've created and started to build out um, API documentation. So focusing on really the end user, which is other engineering teams. Um, so here's just our quick development timeline that we're working on. So we're hoping to, to uh, deliver a functional prototype um, probably in the next couple of months, which we're getting pretty close to. So as part of this ecosystem, we're trying to you know, leverage other tools so you can see here uh, vent display that has been used and just briefly over the holidays added this little um, GUI, which you can use as an input. And this actually sends um, through a little Flask server command to, um, to a Arduino device or ESP32. So you can actually um, control the, um, the ventilator through this, this UI. And we hope to develop um, basically with um, clinician feedback, some kind of reference design, which then can be later transferred into an embedded design. And this is just a little demo that I made, uh, but this takes a lot more time to do. So these are sort of the, the areas we wanna look at in the future, uh, in addition to the core tool. So we're really looking for volunteers that can do um, a lot of these things, but also, um, some of the, the other components like the marketing and, and outreach is, is a big part. Um, 